we're going to be taking a look in this video at the character consistency and also upscaling. Uh, two of the most popular or most important issues inside uh, generative AI. Now, I'm going to be working inside of Scenario, and some of you guys may already be using the, the, the platform. If not, you can use the link below to sign up. There's a free account, and the, the service scales up to you know whole kind of teams working together, creating all sorts of wonderful things. Now, the idea behind the the platform is focused on gaming but you can use it in a whole different range you can use it in comic book creation in just graphic design we're going to take a look at how to use probably the best technique for creating character consistency let me show you how it's done now these are some of the images that i've just created and this is using a character laura this is using the training method and to get ahead with this one we go to uh, if you've not used the platform before, you've got a home page, which is your safe space. You can come here to access anything inside your account. We're going to go to images and inside of images, we want to generate images. Now you'll find that the, the foundation models, which are Stable Diffusion 1.5 and SDXL, the platform models are a good place to start. So what I could do is to choose an SDXL LoRa. Now I've got my reference image and what we'll do is to, we can work with the influence at zero. We're not going to really be using the detail inside the image. And if we just generate using this particular LoRa, we'll see what kind of results it produces. Now, just hitting the render button, the generate button, that basically gives us an indication of the type of images that we will get from this particular model. You can then go a little bit further and uh, you can actually prompt for exactly what you want to see inside the image. And I did that inside of Perplexity. This is an AI that it's, you can use ChatGPT if you want to. I asked, give me a detailed generative AI prompt for a handsome European superhero of Mo of modern move of a modern movie wearing a superhero costume with cape now one really useful thing about a scenario is that when you hit the enter button it will it will basically separate your prompt out into relevant bits what i want to do is to add front view back view and side view that helps it to understand what i want from the generation now the reference image itself i actually got from adobe stuck and Adobe Stock is simply the best website that I find for finding images where you've got a model posing, the same model posing in different ways. As you can see here, we actually can create images that look quite different in some ways from the original. So here we've got the superhero and it's just literally taking the essence of the com composition and not really leaving the detail. Now here we are and you can see the images created here. They are from a different model. I used the Helen model and I wasn't quite happy with the results that I was getting with the original one. Now the one that I really like and the one that I want to work with is this guy here. But before we do that, I want to point out that I had to put in a negative prompt, which is for Superman because it was giving me too much of a Superman vibe. And it's given us these sort of young looking characters and we can just review the pose, sometimes getting the right posture can be a little bit difficult for this AI. So you may have to do a few generations to get to get the results you want. So what we want to do is to take this guy, we'll upscale it and just look at, make it look a little bit more photorealistic. Now using the upscale feature is one of the magic aspects of the of this platform. We can upscale two, four, eight times and there are different options. What I want to do is to choose photographic. The guy looks like a 3D render, that's not a problem. You've got options there, we'll choose photographic and what you can do is to choose one of three presets, precise, balanced, creative. And I'm gonna choose creative because that sometimes is cool in the results that it produces. We're not gonna keep this prompt and we're gonna choose a slightly more slightly more vague prompt. So detailed, ornate texture. When you use photographic, you'll find the creativity goes all the way down. I'm gonna increase a little bit. You don't wanna go above, above about 80 unless you really, really want a lot of creativity. We're gonna hit upscale and we'll see the results. Hopefully the results should be a little bit, a uh, little bit more detailed than the original one. Now, after the upscale, you can see we've got that sort of photorealistic 
look coming in and you can see this item here looks a little bit more detailed and that's the kind of thing to look for with an upscale does everything look exactly the way you would like it to now the face is important because it shows the, the sort of photorealism coming through now you can if you want to generate more than one upscale to see which one is the best but let me show you what i got in the previous previous round so this was the original image that i worked on there's a lot of androgyny going on there this was from the upscale and it's not something I disliked. I actually kind of like that. I also really liked other aspects of the results that I got. There's a lot of texture. You see the kind of wrinkling there in the costume. You can see the detail in the costume. That was not there originally. That's something I had to prompt inside of the upscale. You can also see these things here, which kind of give off light in different uh, in different generations, in different renders. And these things I prompted for in the upscale. So you can see the lifelike look, the texture, a lot comes from the upscale, not from the original render, but the upscale. So the upscale turns out to be an important part of actually deciding what your final result is going to look like. And by the way, this is the canvas inside of a scenario. It allows you to work with different Let's see if I can just switch some of these off. It allows you to chop things up into different components. Now you can do this inside of Photoshop as well or GIMP. And that's going to be useful for the next bit that we're going to be working on. So I literally went ahead and just chopped it up into different little pieces. And those pieces were then used to create the model that we're going to train. Now I created a model using the data that we were looking at and you can see the images right at the beginning of the video to see what kind of results we got from that model. But I wanted to go back and look at the process in a little bit more finer detail and I wanted to do this using, I wanted to do it using an example with more poses. I thought I would get also a more consistent result if I had a very simple costume. So here we have a blouse, we have jeans, we have white sneakers. That is going to be very easy to caption, which is what we're going to be doing when we create the model. Now this image is already upscaled, so there's a lot of detail there, but I decided also to upscale some of the individual components that we cut out of the major document. Now working with these very, very highly upscaled images most of the time was not a problem. I found that I could upscale an image and then I could upscale it again and get very high resolution material that I could use to train my model. Now head on over to the models and if you hit plus you'll be able to create a new model. We're going to be training and now we need to start adding our images. Now the next bit actually tripped me up a couple of times. We need to add the images. And before we actually upload them, we need to make sure that the images are cropped. So the cropping process has to take place now at this point. And you get an option to crop images into the size, which is 1024 by 1024 that they need to be in order to do the training. So just scroll the wheel of your mouse, readjust everything, and then scroll down to the end of the page in order to hit the confirm button. Do this for any images that are not already cropped in the, uh, in the required square format. Scenario will automatically give your images captions. And I decided that I wanted to call the model Blonde Kalela. And that was going to be the name of the girl inside the image. And I decided to change every instance of where it said woman to Blonde Kalela. So I could always prompt for this particular name and bring up this particular image or this particular woman in, well, we're going for character consistency and this is the girl that I want and this is the girl that I created. So I want to make sure I can call her up whenever I need her. Now, occasionally there are some errors in the captions, but for the most part, I would leave the captions as they are determined by the uh, by the AI itself. That seems to produce good results. Having named the model, we can go ahead and choose subject since this is going to be a character model. And then I would probably leave most of the settings exactly as they are. As long as the as long as the captions look good, you should be good to go for the training. Now we can save the model as a draft and then do the training a little bit later on. But uh, the training itself will take, take a little bit of time and you'll get an email once it's finished. And once the training begins, we get over to the model management area where we have uh, an overview 
We can collect some images that are produced by the model. And we also have details of the model itself. Now, the details are going to be useful if we need to retrain at any point in time. And once our model is baked and ready, I like to create a few images just to test it and to see whether or not we're getting the kind of results that I want. This is no prompt. And this is after a few prompts, which, well, they give me an idea of what sort of character consistency we're getting. And it looks pretty good. I like the outcome. And I think the testing, once you start testing it, you can get an idea pretty quickly of whether or not it's doing what you want it to do. Now, in the future, we can access the model and it will be in the Your Model section or the Your Models tab. We open it up, we can actually start pinning some images that we've created and we can use these to sort of identify the model. Now, I've put her in a warehouse with a time machine because why not? And we can use some of the representative images. The character consistency with this one is amazing. And I did find that as long as you keep the costumes very simple, it's actually pretty easy to get very consistent characters. Use lots of images, use lots of postures. Spend a bit of time deciding how you're going to populate all of these training images. And you can come back once again if you want to and retrain using the same data and maybe adding other data in future. But you know, this is just the beginning. Go ahead and click on start compositing. And this is where the real magic begins. We can start adding other models from the platform with our model and we can create a composite model. Uh, I'm going to choose this Trista model here. We're going to add that to the composition and you can add as many models as you want. Start off with the, a couple and then you can either test the composition or you can actually save it. Now this composite model is indeed a new model. So let's start over by generating some new images and we can also use the prompt spark to create more complex prompts from a very basic introductory text. And that allows us to test the, the, the new model in a range of situations. Now, once you've tried a few mixes, a few compositions, you'll find that you can really check to see whether the model is maintaining the level of consistency that you want. Obviously, the more complex the compositions, the less likely you're going to hold the original image, but the more likely that the image is going to be free, flexible. You don't want to use that very original model that you created. It's going to be very inflexible, but once you once you combine it with other models, the results are quite magical sometimes. And of course, talking of magic, we want to use that upscaler to improve the quality of images that we're getting. This is really one of the big finds. I really, really think this is one of the uh, key assets inside the scenario workflow. As for that original model, I decided to mix and match it. I called it Androlora because of the andro androgynous aspect of it. I decided to mix and match with a whole bunch of different models. And the results we got were pretty instructive. With this particular mixture, I always had flaming red hair and I found that I needed to, much of the time I needed to put in a negative prompt for cape because it kept giving the, the girl a sort of Superman or superhero cape, which is not really part of what I wanted with the original design. Now, some mixtures gave a female looking character. Some mixtures gave a male looking character. And this one, uh, this particular one really, really responded very strongly to whatever prompt you use. So all of these images, same model, just different prompting styles. And it gives the girl a beautiful kind of a, uh, kind of magenta bluish hair, which I thought was nice. And when you like a particular result, you can actually remove the background and composite it inside another image if you feel that you want to get that consistency. And of course, using the upscaler can be used to creatively change the image or just to uh, remove imperfections or add detail.